Today we're talking all about travel days. Fun. Yeah. Such fun. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, I think we tolerate it. Yeah. It's nature of the beast. You I'm know. Kind of like immune to it now because it's so routine. Yeah, we've gotten into a groove and we yeah. have our checklist. And we're going to share all that stuff with you guys on what a travel day looks like for us. Oh. And along the way, if you have any tips or tricks or anything that you think would help us improve <laughs> our travel day. Uh, I'm sure they exist. <laughs> yeah. Or if we mention anything that uh, it helps you uh, plan your yeah. travel days, let us know about that too. Because we like to, to know that we helped. Yes. So typically, kind of like most RV couples, yeah. one person does the outside stuff, one person does the inside stuff. Yeah. And for our case... I do all the outside stuff. Leslie does all the inside stuff. Mm -hmm. Travel day doesn't start on travel day though. No. Travel day starts the day before travel day. Pre-travel day. So uh, a few things that we got to knock out before we actually travel mm -hmm. tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow is a short travel day. So we yeah. took advantage of the short travel day because everything takes longer when you're filming it. Hell yeah. Sure does. So um, we're going to get started with uh, what our travel planning and day routine looks like. Travel prep. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. One thing that we will always do is we will always call ahead on the day prior to travel day to the campground just to make sure that they are ready for us and that everything's going to go smoothly because we have shown up to campgrounds before and they acted like they had no idea that we were coming that day. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to program our destination into our RV GPS today so that I don't have to do it tomorrow. So that way it's already set to go. We jump in the truck, pull up the most recent destination, which is the one that I'm going to plug in today, and we're on our way. I'm going to make sure that the gray water valves are closed. Because I'm going to collect some gray water because later on when we dump the black tank, we're going to use that gray water to flush through the hose to make sure that it's cleaned out completely. One thing I always do on the day before travel day is check the pressure and the temperatures of the tires on the fifth wheel because the last thing you want to do the morning of travel day is to find out that you have a low tire or an issue with the tire and then you're breaking out the compressor or you're trying to fix something that's messed up. So um, we use the tire minder and it monitors all of our tire pressures and temperatures. So the day before travel day, I'll turn this on and I'll scroll through all the tires to make sure that the temperatures and the pressures are good. Now I will check that again tomorrow morning, but I always check the day prior that way, if there's an issue, um, not spending a lot of time on travel day, messing around with the tires. The tire minder system is super easy. It really is just plug and play. You put the batteries in the sensors, the sensors on the tires, and you program it into this uh, display module. And, um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that because we did a video on that and I'll put a link in the description if you want to go check out that video and see all the details of how the tire minor system works, but we like it. It may sound like common sense, but uh, we're going to go ahead and say it anyway. Before you take off uh, to your next destination, you want to make sure you're fueled up and make sure you have your DEF topped off if you're driving a diesel. Because without the DEF, she won't go. Well, now I'm going to dump and flush the black tank and I'm going to take all this stuff down so I don't have to worry about it tomorrow. Now, while I'm dumping and flushing the black tank, I'll show you what else I'm going to tear down before we have to travel tomorrow. While the black tank is flushing, I am going to remove the Valterra stabilizers. Now, these stabilizers um, are not part of the RV. They're aftermarket and they're in our Amazon store. Anything we talk about during this video product wise, it's all in our Amazon store. So if you want to go check all that stuff out, you definitely can. And we have two Valterra stabilizers. This one in the back prevents the rocking left to right. The one I just took down prevents the rocking front to back. So we'll take this one down too. All right, another thing I'll do while the black tank is flushing out is I'll go ahead and take the flag down. We got the solar ring on top, so you want to make sure that's turned off so that it's not running the, the battery down inside your bay. One thing we do before we get done with all the whole flushing process is while the water is still running through the black tank flush, we'll close this black tank valve and we'll let that water collect for about a minute. And the reason we do that is just to have a little bit of water in that black tank so tomorrow when we're traveling that water is going to be sloshing all around, knocking all those particles off the wall of the black tank and then when we get to where we're going tomorrow, we'll open that back up and let all that crap and crud out. Now while we're collecting water in the black tank, everything else has already been pumped out of the black tank. so that shower water that we collected earlier in the gray tank we're going to release that and let that flow through to clean out our sewer hose 
and that way it's clean as clean as it can be before we put it away when you get done with the whole flushing process make sure that you close these gray tank valves because if you don't then you know whatever water we use tomorrow morning for brushing our teeth and getting ready uh, when you get there and try to hook up your sewer hose all that water is going to be waiting for you when you open up the little thingy and that's not fun you get baptized all right now that we're done with the whole flushing process we made sure we closed our, our valve so we're not going to get a surprise tomorrow when we open that up and now we just got to clean everything up get the black tank flush hose put away and then get the sewer hose put away the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that everything that I just did on the day before travel day is checked off of my checklist. We have a checklist and basically all we did was take all the key things that we need to do on travel day, put it inside of a document protector, and we use this dry erase pen to cross everything off. Now one side is everything we do before we hook up the truck to the RV, and the back side is everything that's after the hookup. So scout. I'll... We'll start with scout. Yeah. Scout's easy. All we have to do is unhook his lights and let them sit. They never, fingers crossed, will ever move during travel. So for now, they just sit. <laughs> okay, for the sink, well, not for the sink, what I need the sink for on travel day is transportation of the air fryer and now the Berkey. All I do is take a beach towel, set it in there, and all the little extra stuff under the sink. For now, we under the straps, get them out of the way. The outside TV will be covered and braced up against the wall. Cover it with the blanket and we're noodling it. <laughs> I'm gonna crawl under there and we'll wrap the straps around. Take the straps. Protect it so it doesn't get scratched. Good to go. Nothing's gonna move. Bathroom's pretty simple. Not much to do. Everything on the shower shelf just goes in a plastic bin. I set it on the floor. Take my washcloth from my face. I just lay it down and let the faucet sit on it. Shower doors come in. Latched. Bedrooms, really nothing to do here. All I do is I take our sling down, throw it on the bed, lock closet doors. And the reason the bedroom and the living room decor is easy to do is because I have quake puttied most everything I can quake putty, so I don't have to take it down. So these are on there, they're not going anywhere. They stay secure. Everything on our bedroom shelf, putty down, gotta stay secure. Bedroom's right. done. Next thing we have to do is we have to get Scout out so that his lights can cool off in the tank before we take off. And he has seen all of this take place <laughs> and now knows, knows exactly what's going down. Yeah, you know. And it doesn't seem like he's very happy about it. No, I say his lights need to cool off. It's just this light bar needs to cool off because it's held up by a magnet. Very strong magnet, but the bumpiest of roads have knocked it off before. So we're gonna let his light cool down, then I can lay it down on the floor on the carpet and not catch fire. Yeah, come hang out up here. Come sit here. Scout will hang out there until we're done prepping for the rest of the travel day. Okay, fridge doors. I only loosen them enough to get them out so I don't have to keep tightening them every freaking time. Good to go. We're gonna check the uh, tire pressures and temps again today. 
to make sure that they are still the same. Well, here is our travel day setup. We have a GPS here. This is a GoPro mount, which we normally don't have. We're gonna have there today because we're gonna be talking as we're traveling. This uh, is the mount for Leslie's phone GPS. That's like a backup GPS, just in case. And then we have the um, backup camera, which we use as basically a rear view mirror when we're in transit, because it does show live video feed from behind us, which is great. I'm gonna make sure our propane is turned off. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta get this kingpin lock off so that it will get hooked up. This is just an anti-theft you know, thing for the kingpin so nobody will steal your RV while you're out exploring. And um, we'll just toss this in the floorboard of the back seat and then I'll just put it right back on as soon as we get there. Next thing to do is roll up this uh, tunnel cover. A couple of latches on, on each, uh, each panel that you have to pull out. Once you undo those, you flip those up. And then you just click this little guy in make sure that it's not going to fly away now this thing sometimes you know, when we're in transit it'll be in different kind of positions and all kinds of craziness so um, once we're getting ready to hook up I'm going to make sure that's really straight because we got to line up pretty straight and then I'm going to make sure that this uh, this hitch plate is pushed all the way down because when we back up that catch capture plate is just going to slide up here like a ramp and lock into the into the truck and because we're going to a place where we are not sure if we're getting a pull through or a back end I'm gonna make sure my cones are readily available if I have to back into a spot so I can set my cones up see my cones in my mirror helps me a lot with the backing up all right now I'm gonna turn the truck around and back it up as close to straight as I can get it and then Leslie will guide me the rest of the way in when the time comes yeah all right scouts next turn. step scouts Here we go. going in the carrier <laughs> It's a short trip, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, you won't be long. We're putting the slides in. Here they come. Also, we're in here to make sure the water heater's turned off. Camera on? And make sure that the camera is on. <laughs> That's going to let me see my backup camera. Stairs up. All right, we're all done with water, so we're gonna unhook that. Uh, this is the first time that we're uh, unhooking with the water softener and with the uh, clear to go filters and stuff. So I gotta figure out a place where I'm gonna put this water softener. <laughs> Another thing that we do is we make sure that the water heater is turned off. All right, this, um, uh, most RVs have this feature, but it's very cool. You turn the power on and then you hit the left and right the buttons together and it'll bring it back to a level at which you unhooked to get you pretty close to hooking back up where you don't have to kind of guess where it's at so we'll do that and now leslie's gonna stand back here as i back up and she'll give me the little hand and arm signals and the air traffic control and uh, she'll let me know whether to go left or right to line me up to yeah. the hitch this and then, works for us yeah to turn more this way turn more this way and then she will let me know when it's uh, all clear to back onto the hitch. Yep. Alright, once we've hooked up, there's a couple things you gotta make sure is good before you go to taking off. Um, and one of those things is you wanna make sure that you look in here and make sure that that clamp is locked around that kingpin and it is and so we'll make sure that uh, we do a little bit of a tug test to make sure that that's not going to pull out of there and and fall down uh, before we actually take off all right power cords in kill cables connected that way if the trailer comes disconnected from the truck at any time for any reason that cable will pull out of there and it will lock up the brakes to the fifth wheel and it won't go flying down the highway all by itself all right now i'm going to retract the rear lane Now I'm going to retract the front landing gear. When I do this, I'm going, to, I'm going to just go kind of slowly. I don't want to slam all that weight onto the back of the truck at once. So I'm just going to take it easy. Now I'm going to make sure nothing's shifting or flying away or anything crazy like that. Once that's done, I'm going to turn it off. Done with that. Make sure you lock this. I have so many times not locked this and you're rolling down the street and the thing's just flapping. And then you got to find a place to pull off and close this thing. It's, it's a whole deal. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, 
after we get all hooked up and everything i'm gonna make sure that the tail lights are working so i'll have leslie press the brakes and you can see that the lights are coming on everything's good so then while i'm back here also i'll just give the bike rack a little bit of a uh, the tug just to make sure that that's secure in there all right last thing to do disconnect the power cord and lug this heavy thing into the storage bay all right the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a final walk around i'm just going to make sure that all the jacks are up make sure that the tires look good under a load uh, make sure we're not going to hit any branches or anything on the way out i'm going to make sure that uh, i know where all the obstacles are coming out of here we're going to be a little tight coming out by the trees up there but uh tires all look good jacks are up making sure all of the uh the doors are locked and secured and we should be good to go We made it and so to set up just do everything we just did but only in reverse yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> all right when I'm, when I'm hooking the power in I want to um, first off I want to make sure that this is off so the breaker is off and now I'll plug my outlet in and now I'll turn the breaker on before I hook the ho uh, before I hook the cord to the RV I'm gonna turn this on and then I'm gonna look at my light indicators to make sure that there's no errors with the with the power and I'm doing all this before we unhook from the truck because there's if there's an issue with the power uh, we want to leave this spot and go to another one if I already got unhook and then check the power and there's a problem now I gotta hook back up to the truck and it's a whole it's a whole deal so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unhook the power from the truck and then we'll uh, disconnect all right, now when I raise this up, I'm just going to lift the, the front jacks only for now. I'm going to lift it up just until there's a, just a little bitty gap between our hitch and the receiver. And then uh, we'll unhook from the truck. Now here's a little tip. If you have one of these types of hitches, uh, if you lift that up and you try to pull on this, it's not going to pull. That's because the tension in there is pulling that, that apart. So what I got to do is I got to get in the truck. I got to back up just a little bit just to relieve that tension on that hitch and then it should slide right open and let us unhook. Ha! Yeah, yeah. Alright, this is the most technical part of the whole setup process. And if it gets too complicated or if you don't think I didn't explain it well enough, please consult your owner's manual because this can get a little a little complicated so now we're going to level the trailer i'll take your question all right we're going to try something new for travel day today and that is these wheel chalks from epo artists they were gracious enough to send us these for free to try out and um, when we first park we always put the little plastic chalks down here but uh, once you get settled, uh, I think this is a good solution. Anything that's going to help your stabilization in your RV is good. It comes with this wrench. It comes with two of the chalks, one for this side, one for the other side. And what else is cool is it comes with a little hook, so you can hook them down in your basement for storage. And that way when you get where you're going, you just unhook this, put them between here, uh, put the wrench on there, and then you just crank it down tight. Not too tight, it's just tight enough to where it's uh, not going to go anywhere. Uh, like we did for all the products that we are going to talk about in this video, we'll leave a link to this down in the description below if you want to go look up for your wheel chalk stabilizers from Epo Artist.
that's what travel day looks like. <laughs> we chose the less painful day because it was only an hour and a half, tra an hour and a half travel day, yeah. so it wasn't terrible. The construction wasn't nearly as bad no, as I thought it was going to be. As bad as people said it would be. And yeah. uh, so leave us your comments. Let us know what your travel day looks like. Let us know yeah. if we, um, you know, gave you some ideas to to make your travel day less painful for you. Or you, and, ha you have a trick that will make it less painful for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to enjoy our time here in Denver. Yes. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed watching our travel day. <laughs> and like we do at the end of all of our videos, we're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with us helping vets out on the road, everything you need to know is down in the description of the video. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.